Welcome to the Empowered Embodiment Revolution, where women leaders reveal how to liberate yourself from body battles so you can follow your heart, own your power, and shine in the world. I'm Darlene Downing, and I am your host for this event, and I am thrilled to be here with you today. I'm so thrilled. Thank you. I have with me the radiantly glowing Lisa Berry. She is an expert at breathing life into the dreams of those wanting to live their lives from a vibrant, energetic, glowing, and healthy body, turning up the natural light of hundreds of clients by helping them fall in love with the right foods and the right choices. Lisa Berry's holistic nutri Lisa Berry is a holistic nutritionist and certified life coach, creator of Dating Your Diet, and grow then glow. She joins us here today to share her true optimism, enthusiasm, and deep compassion as we dive into the topic on how you can glow effortlessly and create a powerful relationship with your body. So welcome Lisa. I am so thrilled to have you here today. It's the only place I want to be today. <laughs> Thank oh. you. Oh. So we've been in this series diving into how we can become more empowered in our bodies. And I'm discovering that people have different ways of viewing it, but at the crux I feel like we're all speaking the same language. So I would love um, for you to share how do you define empowered embodiment. I love when you first, um, the emails that we exchanged and we were seen if we were on the same page, which of course we were, and, and I mentioned to you, you know, how, how I feel the most empowered in my body is to kind of be above my body and be the observer. For me to be empowered in this body, in this vehicle, and as you so beautifully put it, as our bodies are a contribution to life, which is still magical to me. I, I'm so grateful to have my body that sometimes I like to not separate to be to not even be in it, but to look at it, to observe it, and to feel what is it that my body needs to allow me, to allow my soul to be empowered. Love that. I love that. And and so has that what has been your journey of your body? Um, I feel like as women in particular, we have an interesting way of relating to our body because our self-esteem and our self-worth is so tied up into our bodies and, and what we're told it's supposed to be. And So I'm, I'm curious what has been your journey with your body, um, your body story? The, I think as the, the body story that we all share, as you said, with women, it does, there's so many demands and expectations on ourselves that we get too wrapped up in the body. And um, I did start off my, let's call it career journey, in weight loss. And weight loss, you know, I was younger and, and just like everybody else, we want to be accepted. But my biggest thing I noticed was that as a counselor, women were coming in and wanting to lose weight. But it wasn't for the reason what I thought they would be coming in for. They were coming down and saying, my pants are too tight, um, I feel fat, or my husband doesn't like this. But then when you found it, some of these underlying symptoms that were really the start of it all, they're constipated. They're losing their hair. They have these weird bumps and rashes on their bodies, but that wasn't what got them to come and want to be healthy and so that was where I started looking at my own that was where I really started my body journey I thought oh my goodness have I been paying t attention to my symptoms or what my body is going through or have I just been worried about image and so the body story for me really got split this is the body image story and this is my body that carries my entire my entire life around with me yeah but it, and it's it's a challenge not to go there. I, you really need to be mindful and conscious of choosing another way of being with your body. So many people are hanging out in that place of identifying their worth and value through the body. So it is a journey. Um, so when, when you had that awareness, um, is that what led you on the path to 
what you're now doing um, as a nutritionist and a coach? Well, interestingly, enough, I I had been I was faced with a, a really odd, um, uncomfortable situation when I was in my early, early teenage years, and I'm really glad it happened. I'm glad that the situation was so bold, and um, I was having some intestinal problems, and and to the point where uh, I really had the the palest skin, and my hair was going green, and like I was just lacking all nutrients. It was yeah, and and at the time, you know, I mean, you're very young, and you are considered, you know, you're cons consumed and wrapped up with all the other things. But I finally, I was ill enough that I had to go to the doctor, and I, I thought this was rather bold. But this to this day, I, I am so grateful and so thankful that this happened. The doctor came into the room, and I was expecting. I didn't know what I was expecting. I was expecting for him maybe to say, take this pill and be better. But instead, he came into the room and he said, well, you have two choices. And I thought, oh, this is good. <laughs> Only two. <laughs> and, and he said, well, Lisa, you can either start to eat properly and healthy and feed your body, or you can die. And, and still to this day, when I, re when I hear that, it was it was exactly what I needed to hear, and I love that he said, "I I I have two choices. Those are those are my choices." And so my mother um, was sick my entire life, and I don't I don't think I realized that that was a choice. You know, when you're younger, you just go and you've seen those things. But then well, he kind of handed that to me, and you know, I remember going home, and my my grandmother um, and my great grandmother were all midwives, and they had all those. Oh my goodness! Hundred-year-old books, and I started reading through them. This vitamin does this, and this nutrient does that. And I thought, I feel so empowered right now because the doctor said I could choose if I right. ate healthy, right? If I ate healthy, I wouldn't have all these issues. So that's actually what got me into the health industry, which was weight loss back then. That I found out really wasn't so healthy, <laughs> no. and then I continued on um, this huge journey from there, and still encountering extreme health issues. I had um, suffered endometriosis and I had many, many surgeries and leaving me with some, some you know, issues that were going to be lifelong from them. Well, what I thought would be as long as I, I, again, chose the right healthy way for me to balance and, and to be in my health. Right. So that was the first crossroads that you came to and that idea that you actually had choice that you could choose. Yeah. yeah. To that day, Darlene, to that day, in my language, every day, even earlier today, I stopped when I was having a challenging moment and I thought, oh, I don't feel well. I don't, I, I'm a little stressed. I have a little bit of anxiety. And I thought, okay, that exists. But what can I choose in this moment that will just calm my breathing down, get my heart, like I had that knot in my stomach and I, th I'm, I'm really not one to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> It feels I yucky, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It just, and you think, oh goodness, I, you know, I really, in my life now, I'm at such a beautiful place in my life. I really feel that way. Um, it, it's taken me a long journey to get even to here, but, you know, every day I stopped, I said, have I had enough, like this sounds, I'm a nutritionist, so when it comes to things, I automatically, my brain goes, wait, have I had my green vegetables today? Have <laughs> I had my volume? <laughs> <laughs> and so I might, I call them scrunch salads when it's an emergency and you run to the fridge and you grab a handful of leafy greens and you scrunch it up and you eat it really quickly and hope all the vitamins go quick. <laughs> so, what do you call it? Scrunch salad? A scrunch salad because I love it. I love it. every day I just grab it, I scrunch it up and then I just eat it because it's so, for me, it's so important because as I that as we just shared that beginning story, it's about the nutrients for, for me and that's why um, the program that I do have is Dating Your Diet. When you date someone, you're trying to find out if they're the right pair for you, the right match for you. And I find that it's, it's, our, it's our power, it's our choice, it's our given right, and it's beautiful to have choice. And every time I come up to a huge, whether it be um, a medical situation or a health situation or a career situation, I just stop and I think, wait, I can choose this right now, what it is. Yes, that's huge. When when you're in that space of feeling out of choice, that that's disempowering. It it feels like you're a victim, and uh, that's not a fun place to be. And you know, I would love for you to talk a little more about. Um, 
I know a little bit about this, and you and I didn't talk about this before, but I wanted to bring it to the conversation. What I love about your work is that you invite people to recognize that they already have the answers within. Oh. And, and I'd love for you to bring that into the conversation because uh, with the whole thing, the piece on nutrition, and there's so many different choices that people can make that it can feel so overwhelming. And so, what? How do you work with people to tap into that knowing that's within with their food, um, it, when they're dating their diet, when they are um, dancing in the nutritional realm for the first time? You know. Right, right. It was funny. I just got goosebumps when you said that because it. I feel that was a perfect. It's a perfect topic and a perfect question for you to ask. And thank you, thank you for that. Um, when? Who? I'm. I'm trying to gather the thoughts on that. When we are. When we block out the rest, like if you just stop looking at the magazines, stop looking at the advertisements, and. Even block out the television because so there's so many things that are subliminal, and we bring it just to how we feel. Don't look in the mirror. Almost be unaware of how you you look. Just feel how you you feel, and there's a, a place of calm, and a place of I feel so good when I eat this food or I'm with this person or I watch this show. I know I just said about not watching TV, but if we can even, we've all seen television, we've all seen that pro or read a magazine. Um, I used to go to the hair salon, I, I do my own now, but I used to go to the salon and I would flip through the pages. And boy, I didn't feel so good about even myself, I just didn't feel good in general because I felt like I didn't have enough. I wanted more all the time. And, and I, I stopped and I thought, gosh, why don't I feel so good about myself? Like, I'm still this fantastic, beautiful soul and spirit. What's, what is so in, like, out, of an alignment, out of alignment there? So when I work with clients, they, they say things. They don't hear them anymore. They've said it so much. Maybe they eat something they always say. Oh, I'm so bloated. But they don't hear that. They've okay. said it. They know they've said it, but they don't hear it because the next time they'll still continue to eat it. So when I'm working with somebody and I hear them say that, I stop them and I ask, what did you just say? You felt bloated. What does that feel like? What does that prevent you from doing? Because I know if I were to eat something and I'm bloated, not only do I, I want to contract and close and close my heart and, and not communicate with people, I can't be creative any longer then. Um, I, don't, I don't feel well. So it's important for them to hear that they felt bloated or they felt fat or they felt stagnant because then it just blocks everything. So I, I try to get them to hear the language that they A, are already saying but not hearing. And if they're not even getting to the point of saying that they're bloated, just if they can take stock of how they feel and compare it to a time when they know they felt energized when they felt vibrant and happy and it doesn't even have to be about food Darlene it could be honestly remembering when you first fell in love yeah that, that ex open your heart is open you're expanded and when you're expanded and open you can exchange and that's where I think when we call it manifesting it's because we're able to give and receive and, and share so that's I, I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent there. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful that because it, it's First of all, it's, it's touching into the, the truth that we all do ultimately know what we need. We can get confused. We can think we don't know. Um, and the awareness piece, I love that. I feel I'm a, a huge fan of awareness, that that's the key that unlocks whatever it is that we feel isn't working in our lives. So the awareness and, um, and the choice. And when you're in those places, then you are able to more fully be yourself and expand and, and do whatever it is that you want to do. I mean, that's what this conversation is about, is empowering your embodiment. Because what's happening is here on Earth, and, and this vehicle that we've been given is, the, is, the, is what we're driving around here on planet Earth, you know? I, yeah. I read this beautiful, beautiful, this is years ago, and it's one of my favorite quotes, and I wish... I, I almost want to say it's Robin Sharma, but I, I can't quite remember. And I remember that the, the quote was, um, our bodies are the is, is. Our body is 
the garage in which we park our souls. Mm. And I tell you love that one. <laughs> so, yeah. and, I, and every time I do see people, you know, usually guys on the weekend, they're cleaning out their garage and sweeping it and organizing it. You're like, see, that's exactly here. Just making it all nice and pretty and not dusty. But also I wanted to say is um, I have clients that do. They come to me, and when we first start, they'll say, I, 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 just, I can't hear it. I, I can't tap in, or I tried. And I'll ask them, did you, did you dedicate a certain time that you weren't truly, truly thinking about everything else. Mm -hmm. It's hard to shut off everything else, whether it be family and just just anybody and anything and all those things, but truly, and that's why I do use um, different tools such as tapping and the Hopopono prayer. You're going to do some of that later on, which I'm excited for you to share. Yeah. Those, and if without, with when I, before I knew any tools, before I knew tools, I didn't know how to get into it either. I used to go to yoga class and just get a little bit frustrated because it, I wasn't shutting everything else off so then I was just getting like Ooh, what am I doing here I'm wasting my time and so many things are going on but then when you can use those tools to get inside you can you can honor and appreciate the five minutes the one minute the, the ten minutes however long you have because in, in order to be aware and listen and, and get to that point you do need help. I needed help. Everybody needs help. <laughs> yeah. You know what? What's fascinating to me is that it actually is an innate. It's the quality that we all have access to when we're born. And as children, children are all super aware. That's what they're just little sponges soaking everything in. They're very aware. And then we get caught up in our minds and in life and in the stress and just the busyness and we lose touch with an ability that we all have, but it requires many of us at this point in evolution to practice it again so that we can get back to that place, you know? I, I, I two, two things I just wanted. I was, um, school uh, just came, went out and I could see the children coming out of the school and they were running and just running and, ah, oh, catch me or over here or whatever. And they, it was perfect. It was beautiful. It was so innocent and... They didn't care if, you know, I don't even know that their legs weren't shaved. I don't know something, you know, like they were just so, <laughs> woohoo. <laughs> and, and I just love that. And I think that's when we, um, like, like we were saying, about those, not, not just expectations in and of our, ourselves, but I think one thing is, and I've come a long way to get to this point, was I knew I loved myself. Like, you know, I, I like me. Maybe I don't like everything at the time, but, you know, I love me. But, but to truly love yourself. Right. And know that you're safe. I think safety for, for me anyways was when I, I know I love myself when I feel safe. And I also know that I attract people who, who also love me and I feel safe with. When you're with someone, even if it's your family, your family uh, or loved ones or anybody, if, your job, if you don't feel safe with your boss, mm. it's so hard to, to get past that. Because it's about judgment at that point. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, um, since our topic today is on glowing effortlessly, I know you talked a little bit. We touched on that before. Was there anything else that you wanted to bring to the conversation about how we can glow effortlessly? And yes, for for glowing, um, that came about actually because when I do meet people, they they say to me, "You just glow." And it's not, it's <laughs> because I, I do believe a smile can bring, like when you smile, you glow. I mean, mm. happiness and peace and joy. And I want to back that up, actually. I also remember learning, I mean learning, like really allowing it to come out, that peace, being at peace with yourself does not mean being happy. It means that you were at choice, that you're good with, you're okay with that choice. You may not be happy about it. But that's how it's going to be. Maybe you're going to learn something from it. And when you are at peace, I believe that that's where the glowing comes from. So I may not, well, I do love vegetables, but say there was a vegetable I didn't love. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I could appreciate it for what it brought to me. Then I would, I would glow because I, I have a good relationship with that food and how I'm eating and how I'm incorporating it into my cells and my body. So I think that to glow means to be at choice point. To glow means to be at peace. 
And to glow means to, to just say no to all the distractions and the clutter and the judgments and things that are blocking you from getting really inside and observing how you're feeling. That's my recipe for glow. <laughs> That's a beautiful recipe. And I, and I love that you presence that, um, the peace part of it, that you, know, you can be at a space where maybe you don't love a particular situation, but if you can be at peace with it, that's much more empowering. That keeps you from shutting your energy down, from stopping and blocking and contracting, which is not a recipe for glow, I don't think. So I want to make sure I cover everything that we wanted to talk about. And you shared, um, maybe you shared it with us earlier where the choice that you were given about your body, was that what you were sharing with us when um, the doctor said that you can shape up your diet or you can die? That was, yeah, that was my number one choice that I was I was faced with. Um, another one I do want to, now this is, I'm not telling everybody to run around and do this, but this was my choice. I had, um, I mentioned earlier that I had endometriosis and that was a very, uh, interesting, odd position to be in because I was diagnosed when I was like 13, like I was in my early, early life and you know, you, you I went through guilt like, oh my goodness, I'm being punished, why do I have this or, you, you know, did I do something wrong or, oh, am I destined to be like this or because my mom was sick, like it's so many thoughts were running through through my mind um, when I was, I think I was, not, I can't remember, but I think I was 19 when I decided the doctor had given me a choice, well kind of, he told me. <laughs> that I should do hormone therapy. And that was really heavy and that really, wow, I had some body changes that I, I didn't understand. I wasn't, um, I kind of, I felt that I didn't have a choice. This is what I had to do in order to control this or, or have this surgery to do that. And very, very disempowered at that time. And I remember a couple years, like I stuck with it for years. And I finally said, oh my goodness, I'm not, I'm not glowing. I am not glowing. And I'd rather see what I could do and be in control of it with food, because I always go to food again, with food and lifestyle. And when I mean lifestyle, I really mean from the moment I wake up, what is my attitude? What, and that's where I would want to talk about the Hopopono, because that is of gratitude. And I stopped all injections. Um, and... I went for it, and you know what? I I am so healthy, and I feel so balanced, and I feel so grateful that even if I do get a little bit off balance, because I have been out of balance a few times here and there over the, the decades, and I've always been able to feel good and be at peace with having to rebalance and correct it. I felt like, wow, this is great. This is just yet, yet another opportunity for me to explore, well, my body is changing. I am going through the different hormonal stages. And sometimes I know this sounds silly, and I just say it. Sometimes when I get period cramps, well, you know what? Thank goodness I get them because that's normal. <laughs> just be thankful for those period cramps, right? Right. Yes. <laughs> All women will hate me now. <laughs> oh. but, but I do go through when I do um, today. You know, for this show, I thought I I want to feel my best. So instead of you know, I don't I don't know what. Everybody can t try to do their own thing, but I thought, I, I have it up here and in here. I can feel my best for this. So I went through my Hopoponos. Mm -hmm. And I, it just it was just like a shift. I just felt if I wasn't, if I was going a little bit, then I, I was able to glow that much more. <laughs> and I love that. So uh, I'm receiving that it's not just the nourishment that you give your body, which is in of itself huge through food. And it sounds to me, feels to me like you use food as medicine or as nourishment um, and what's going to support your body. But it's, you're also nourishing your emotional body and your mental body, which, you know, I think it's so interesting. There's so much focus many times on food and what you're putting in your mouth or the supplements that you're taking. However, the nourishing that you do for your emotions and for your mind and your spirit it should be a you know that that that's part of the the well being that I think is missed a lot. How do you feel about that? Well, I love that you asked that and 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 commented there because when I eat, ev I know that when I go into my kitchen, every food in in my kitchen has been chosen by me 
for a reason. Happiness, nourishment, recovery, rebalancing, every supplement. I know that I, I couldn't go into the kitchen and hurt myself. There's no, I, I couldn't go in there and emotionally hurt myself or physically hurt myself. Um, if there's a so-called treat, or I don't like the word treat, actually, I call them exceptions because it's something you don't do all the time, but it's an exception that you, you step out from the norm to do. But that's okay because I've chosen it. I've put it there, and it's not in some insane um, amount, you know, like the big, you know, the warehouse sales, and you just get everything and suck off on you. <laughs> like, I, I can literally go in the kitchen and go, oh, my goodness, I'm getting low. What am I going to pick? But so when I see I, I create a small little snack or meal, when I eat it, I do go through, ooh, you're feeding me and doing this. Like, uh, um, see, it is a carbohydrate. Oh, I'm going to get some instant fuel from you. And, oh, look at you, healthy fat. You're going to balance my hormones and make my brain really rich and, and moisturize my skin. And it's really funny. And, I, and, I, and sometimes, like, um, uh, aloe vera juice. Let's say I, have, I do I have aloe vera gel in my the gel, like the goofy little stuff. And, I buy, and that, that's in a big jug. But I know every time I go and I drink my quarter cup of it, I can feel my stomach lining healing. <laughs> that is so cool. I love the mindfulness that comes with it and this expectation of and the purposeful, you know, the, like the purpose behind what you're giving your body. That's just a, a very kind and collaborative way of being with your body when you're feeding it. That's because so a lot cool. of the women, if you know, we, do you know that everybody does that, but they do it on the flip side, and it's unfortunate because this is what we're trying to help women. Because you know that all everyone who women and men who eat, let's say an unhealthy food, or like let's just throw it out there, potato chips and uh, cookies and don't like really really unhealthy things. You know what? They're eating it. They're still thinking about it, but they're hurting themselves. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna gain two pounds from this. Oh, there goes this. I've blown it now. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Or I'll do it really quick so no one sees. So we're all still thinking about it. It's which way are we going to choose to think about our foods? Are we going to think about them? And it's the relationship, and that's where the dating your diet rate comes back because you're still you're in that relationship with them, with the foods. That's so great. And, you know, what you're choosing to think when you're choosing to see how you're supporting your body with the food, not only are you being conscious of what you're putting in your body and how it will benefit your body, you're doing it from a place of gratitude uh, to nourish your body. You're feeding your body high vibration emotions at the same time and high vibration thoughts at the same time that you're feeding your body high vibration foods. I love that it. Is Perfect. And what is a high vibration? You're thinking glowing. That's you. Yeah. Oh, that was so beautiful. That was so yeah. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. So um, I Maybe. would love for you, I would love for you to talk more about um, some out of the box tools that came into your world to help you in supporting your glow. Because we're we're talking. I know we've been talking about food, but we're talking about more than food. Um, the summit is about shifting the paradigm on well-being, that it's not just about the food, it's about other ways that you support yourself, like we've been sharing. So what out-of-the-box tools did you come across? <laughs> I've chosen my top two, and the reason why they're my top two is because I use them every day, multiple times a day. <laughs> Um, and I'll name them, but I, I would like to focus on one more than the other. The two that I do use, like I said, every day, is tapping, which uh, is emotional freedom technique, and it's something to, in general speaking, get through those barriers and dive in and find out what um, what's holding you back and what challenges are, and then how to get through them. Um, the other is called a Hopopono prayer, and that one is just it is so beautiful and so deep and so loving. I learned the two a few years ago, and I will say um, there's different levels of understanding of these. The, I probably tapped for two years before that kind of, aha, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, got the tapping. <laughs> but the thing I want to mention with um, when we're tapping, you do go through rounds, but the most important thing to me, because sometimes I don't have time to tap or I'm in public and I don't want to be tapping all the time, um, are, are two things, and I, and I say these in my head all the time. The opening statement, it doesn't always have to be, but it usually is, even though. So say I'm struggling, oh, I was struggling with technology this morning, so 
even though I am feeling so tense and I'm struggling with technology, so you have a, that build a statement, because I want to acknowledge it. I don't want to say, oh, I'm not really struggling. Oh, you know, so I want to acknowledge it. And that's, that's a super helpful tool. So, okay, even though I'm struggling, I believe that there's a way I can do this. Maybe it's going to be different than somebody else. Um, maybe it's going to be not the norm. But so even though, and then to say there's a turnaround, like I know there's hope. I know there's a way. I'm going to choose to feel that there's a way or believe there's a way. And I think by saying, yes, I have this challenge, but there's hope, there's a possibility and belief, that's where the tapping for me, I really tap those two two components of tapping into my my attitude and my thought process, my out of the box tool there. <laughs> and with the okay. Ho'opono prayer, that is more I I use Ho'opono quite often and then one one night, and I, I hate to be so dramatic about this, one dark raining, it was thundering. No, it was <laughs> And I was looking out the window in incomplete. I was crying like it was, it was a low, um, dark, heavy, deep moment for me. And I broke into this hopopono, and the chills came over me. And I got it. And I just went on and on and on about twenty minutes of this. And I was like, "Whoa, I get it." And yeah. so, a hopopono prayer is a Hawaiian forgiveness prayer. And it's not, and I get this now, it's not about forgiving anyone else. It's not about even forgiving the world or how things are. It's about forgiving yourself for some beliefs that you might have carried that aren't true, for some hurtful things that you believe about yourself. Oh, so the, who cares if they are true? But they shouldn't hurt you. So there's four lines in Hopopono Prayer. And the first one, and I have them on a little card, the first one, and I'll just show because I always carry <laughs> it, is, is I'm sorry. And we've all at least had somebody say they're sorry to us before, at least once. It feels good. It shifts, right? Like, if I were to say sorry to you for anything, like, it shifts. Like, your defenses go down. And so if I were to say to myself, Lisa, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for holding that belief about me. And... Maybe calling myself a name. I'm sorry for hurting myself for all these years or just now. Or I'm sorry for putting myself into that situation. And then the next line is, please forgive me. So I'm not asking anyone else. I'm asking me. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive myself and free me. So you, you get the defenses down and you ask for forgiveness to be free. And then you be thankful. Thank you. Thank you for giving me that freedom from that belief and that hurt and that pain. And now I can move on. And how can I move on? By saying, I love you. I love me. I love you. And so those four statements would go, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And to me, that's just, oh, <laughs> I just, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's, I've done Hopopona before too and it's very powerful and that whole piece of self-forgiveness and self-love is really what I feel is the biggest benefit there. We're, we're so great at beating ourselves up. You know, we practice it so much. We've just gotten really, really good at it. And um, to create that space, that container of compassion and love and forgiveness for ourselves. And I, and I was feeling we could even do that with our bodies, too. Like, if we felt like we had been beating our bodies up, if we were able to get to that place where we could do that with our bodies, too. Well, um, you're holding that, that emotion of hurt and pain in the cells. And that, that stagnation is, I mean, I, I speak to a lot of my, my friends, my clients, but my friends, to say, you know, I just wonder, if you were just to ask yourself, that fat cell that you think is cellulite, do you think it's just something you ate, or do you think it could be an emotion that's creating that, that pocket that you just need to let go of? And I think, like, I get emotional thinking about this. It's that, yes, by 
just like you said, so beautiful right now. We're almost taken over by it. It's just to, I think that we need to be able to, to love ourselves and free ourselves and, and bring that down to, like dieting, if you're on a diet, a diet, if you're on a diet, there's yeah. not enough space. Yeah, yeah, there's just not enough space to love and have that compassion. Yeah. So, yeah. Love it. Well, would you, I've been asking everyone to do an empowered embodiment tool. And this could be a perfect tool. Would you like to guide us through the Hopopono so that everybody can have this? And when would you um, suggest, just any time that you catch yourself being angry or beating yourself up about your body or, I mean, when would you, when would this be a good time to use it? The, I like to have a moment when I can say it out loud. Um, you can say it quietly, but if there's a moment at the end of your day, at the beginning of your day, or on your lunch break, that you can, you know what, go through it. I would almost suggest even, because maybe you, you're not aware yet when you need it, do it every day. Because when I did it, I was just doing it, and it was in my time of great need that so much was released. And, and try to, so if we were to go through it, and we were to say, just right now. Let's do it. Take, take your name, Darlene, take my name, Lisa, and say to yourself, I'm sorry, Darlene. Like, I'm sorry, Lisa. And then allow to come up whatever, you know what, you'll be surprised. Whatever you, like we said, you have the answer inside you. Whatever you inside are hurting about that needs an apology, that needs compassion, will come up when you say, I'm sorry. And I just got goosebumps, like, a lot. <laughs> so yeah. I'm feeling... So if I were to say, Lisa, I'm sorry, instantly things will come up, like for being so hard and having such higher expectations. And when I say, I'm, I'm sorry, and you think, oh, I'm sorry that I lashed out on somebody at somebody else this morning because I was stressed. So it's an, the anger comes from pain. So if you can run through every day to say, I'm sorry to myself and please forgive me. And then what I say is when I'm doing, please forgive me right now in this moment for hurting myself. Please forgive me in this moment for a lifetime of believing something that hurt me. Please forgive me for thinking that that low vibration and toxic thought has been captured in my body. And please forgive me for thinking I wasn't good enough to move forward and to get past this. So the I'm sorry and please forgive me get very deep. The, the thank you is, oh, it's so big. It's big. This is where you start to glow. Thank you. Thank you for having the courage. Thank you for showing up for myself right now. Thank you for cleaning out the garage <laughs> so I can park my stuff in there. <laughs> and you know, it's like, yes, you, thank you for, for maybe going for a walk. Thank you for stretching. Thank you for opening up. Thank you who, for letting me breathe and have the space in my lungs because now I'm not, <gasps> right? Yeah. The, the thank you lets you get bigger. And the I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Every part of you, don't even look at your body. I love my thoughts. I love my soul. I love my heart. And I love what this container is. I love that word. You I love this container that allows me to put all that in there and have a physical aspect so that I may go and, and have somebody else release and love themselves and be sorry and forgive. So if we could all just say that, just four lines, just right now, and let whatever comes up. We love digging the big breath out. Whew. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you. <sighs> and the shoulders just suddenly drop. <sighs> it's just <laughs> And to say that over, and I've, I've practiced this before, you can just keep saying it over and over again, and or just whatever feels right for you. And maybe, you're, maybe you only say the I'm sorry a thousand yeah. times. 
Right. Because maybe, yeah, you might you might not get what I'm sorry means. And when I did the Ho'oponopono for a li for two years, let's say, I would say I'm sorry to someone else. I'm sorry to someone else. But then I realized I'm sorry to that person because of something I did. So you're really so, saying it to you, right? And and I did it because there was something in me that I needed to be sorry for. So I. My, I, I went through another little bout of again. My, I, my issues always go to my colon. I always had, you know, it's my stress, my hurt, my heart, my immune system is in my small intestines and my gut, just like everybody else's. And when, when I'm not emotionally balanced and I don't feel well and I'm upset with myself or stressed, I really have a lot of gut issues. My guts hurt. Okay. And yeah, and so. The, these out of the box tools, like I couldn't correct that with just um, medication. I couldn't correct that with just food, even. I have to calm my heart. So that's, I would say, that's if you want to glow, glow from your guts, <laughs> glow from your inside out. Calm your heart and glow from your gut. <laughs> <laughs> A cardiac calm. And empower, you know what that is? That that's an empowered heart to me. That's what just came up. You're, you know, you are, you're empowering that self love again to flow through you, and that power comes from the heart. It's not this force of I need to do this so that I can love myself. It's just, just taking it in and loving yourself first, and then the true power that's within is allowed to flow. You know, some people are weird about. I don't want to say weird. Some people get uh, shy around the word power as in, in, I'm empowering over someone else, and that's that's not it. It's the, the potency. The it's unique. It's yours. It's you. And and I lo actually I love that you said the word weird. I have to, can I can I go with that just for a second? I love that word. I love that word because okay, here's a confession. Um, and I, I had to go through my own Hobopono. I used to call my mom weird all the time. And I was like, why do you have to be so weird? Everybody looks at you. <laughs> I was so weird. <laughs> and and I, I'm so glad that I was able to apologize to her. But you know what? Because she was so empowered in her own self. And if she wanted to do what I thought was weird, but it made her glow, then the people who recognized her her glow, her light, would be, and you know what, that was her way of saying, you know what, if you're not comfortable with your glow, then, then you don't have to be in my realm, but you know what, you're more than welcome to accept me because I accept me. And mm -hmm. another neat thing is animals. Oh my gosh, you and I had a little brief chat about animals, but you know what, practice your Hopopona, see your Hopopona when you're, when you're comfortable with yourself, you can say them to your animals, they love you so much unconditionally, I say them to my cats all the time. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, they probably love it too, all that yummy energy that's... Yeah, they just, every, everybody glows here, we are, our food glows and our cats glow. <laughs> so, and I think that's, yeah, if, if we can, I and I still to this day, I don't, I still don't look too much in the magazines. You know, I can see them, I see that they exist because I can feel that's a, a lower vibration that will cause me to judge myself. Yes. Even with all my help opponents and tapping, judgment can set, set in, and I want to, I want to just keep that in check. And and thank you for presencing that too. That you know, we're we're works in progress. I know I am. Um, this this constant journey that. Uh, I'm on, I feel like we're all on, we're never done. I was having this conversation with another speaker that none of us is perfect and it's never over, it's just this process of evolution and to acknowledge that they can still come up, yet we can make conscious choices on what we bring into our field um, and choose not to have it surround us so that it makes it more difficult to stay in our power. And then when we have those moments where we slip, then we've got tools like Hopopono or tapping or dancing or whatever it is that makes you glow, that you can choose that to, to raise your vibration again and, and get back on track. And it is, it is summits and, and uh, interviews that you do like this that I can't wait to hear the other speakers because holy work in progress, my goodness, I'm kind of excited because every time I get a new tool or I hear a new song or I have a new idea to do something, I think, I didn't, you know, how can, like what you always say, how can it get better? I, I do want to know. It, it can. 
and I'm I'm looking forward to it. And and it, yes, I can't like whoop. Now I want to see if there's any dancers on the on the call here. <laughs> Oh, just expanding our world and expanding possibilities. That's the intention, um, just to know that there's other possibilities and all of us to stay curious, like what else is possible with embodiment? What would it, what would it take for all of us to glow and to be in our power and our bodies and how can we make choices that will create that? Well, you have just been such a delight to talk with, and I'm looking at the time. It's just gone by so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> having such a good time. You've had, I loved hearing your own story, your own personal story, and how you've empowered yourself, and how you're doing that in support of your clients. And the Hopopona tool is fabulous. I feel, I know it's been really helpful for me. And it's not one I practice a lot. And I'm going to start practicing it again, bringing it in. Um, so thank you for that. Different stages, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I know that you have extended your generosity and you have offered a free gift to all of the listeners so that they can experience more of your wisdom and your glowing energy and all of the gifts that you have to share and we are we have we have a link right below this video that people can go check that out and see what it is but I'm going to let you talk oops not just sorry about that I'm going to let you talk about um, your gift and explain what it is that they can dive into down there Okay, thank you so much, and thank you for the opportunity for me to give. Um, I love sharing, and like you said, just any little tool or, or helpful, helpful modality. So what I chose to offer everybody is a little magic, glowing magic, all those things. They just make me sparkle. So uh, I wanted to, I used a story that we all are very familiar with. Um, I'll say, I'll just spill the beans here. It's, it's a twist on the Cinderella story. So that'll just be a little hint for you guys to go click on that link to get the free gift. I used a very common story and I, I wrote a little magic for us to put ourselves into Cinderella's shoes and glass slipper and how to empower ourselves through our choices. I wanted to give tips in this free gift on how could we easily and quickly shift our own mindset and heart set because sometimes we just don't know how so this gift really will enable anybody who reads this to identify to resonate and just get that little bit of magic in there and there's just five yeah, pretty much five little tools. I do talk about the tapping and the Hopopono but there are some really simple tools and more than anything a lot of people just don't have the, qu the language, the questions to ask how they feel and if they don't know how they feel, they can't shift. So this, um, this little tool, this little gift that I've offered helps you with the language and it helps you create a picture that you can identify with by using the story and I hope it all just lifts your spirits a little as well, makes you chuckle when you read it and, uh, and just go through and then if, if anybody you know goes through those five steps and they want to share with me or, or yourself, darling, that you like post it or email it, um, let us know if those steps, how they work for you and I really do hope they help you turn up that little glow a little and just to finish off by saying that if somebody's out there thinking, oh my god, I don't want to glow, I don't want to be seen, oh, this, because some people have a little bit of fear not to worry. This glow is a personal glow. It's a glow you get all on your own. It's a candle within. Uh, it's just a few. If you're a private person, you can glow privately. You can glow just for you. And so I think that's what I also wanted to share. Like some, some, the magic is just, it's for you, and it will just sprinkle out to the way it, how it's supposed to go. <laughs> mm. uh, it's I am fascinated. I've got to go check out that gift because I want to. I want to see Cinderella's uh, story and your twist on it with the magic that you create with your tools. And I so appreciate everything that you've shared here today. First of all, your energy is just a testament to what you've chosen in your life. How you are literally glowing from the inside out. So that's just beautiful to witness and. Um, all of the wisdom that you've had to share. I very much, Lisa, for taking this time. I'm so happy that you came into my world and 
that I you and I had this conversation be. today. Yeah, this was, as, as I said in the beginning, it's the only place I wanted to be. I feel like I've just had a beautiful conversation with a lovely girlfriend, and it's going to be shared with so many others, and I just really beyond am so honored and appreciate being here right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to all of our listeners who are here, thank you for taking the time for choosing to create more joy, more bliss, more glow in your life. And there's many more interviews to come, so stay tuned. More empowered embodiment tools and tips to share. And until then, bye for now. Bye, everybody. Please to say bye to everybody. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> bye. Thank you.